Hi, I wanted to talk to you now about my favorite part of French fashion dolls. I know I love the faces, I know I love the bodies, but when it comes to the trousseaus, that is just fabulous for me, the costumes, the study of the historic costumes. And we're so fortunate in the Hannah Buchus collection to have, um, oh, I think there are about eight dolls that have original trousseaus, and then so many dolls that have original costumes. This, okay, I'm admitting it, this is my favorite. I love this little 14-inch Romer with her just extraordinary original costumes and lots of accessories. And let me just, you can look at her, please. She has the little painted eyes. She even has a little beauty mark in the costume she's wearing. She has a parasol. She has a bonnet, which is just absolutely amazing. And I think I want to take it off of her head so you can see it in a little more detail because it kind of blends into her head. This is all wire framed with organza silk and then the little uh, fernery fronds and silk flowers on the top. Just extraordinary. So well, before we go to her dresses end, let's look at her bonnets for a minute. She owns this woven straw bonnet with the flower trim and the silk lining on the interior. She owns this little woven bonnet with beautiful lining and coral silk ribbons and little rosebuds decorating it. And she owns a pressed flannel bonnet, which is wonderful as well. Oh, I missed one. She owns this brown woven bonnet with little flowers on it. So that, uh, that would be four bonnets, plus the one she has on, plus her little ruffled edge cap. She has a pair of kid skin gloves. She has binoculars. She has turquoise jewelry, including this wonderful watch and fob, a nice fan. Look at this little dresser set right here. This is incredible, of carved bone in a leather case. Tiny size just for her. She has handkerchiefs. She has more jewelry, including a chatelaine. And I could just go on and on showing you all of the pieces that she owns. But then, what do they say? Wait, there's more? Look at this. Look at these three dresses. They are, I, I talked to you in the last video about this color of mauve and purple that are so predominant during this 1860 period. Look at these three dresses. And in case you didn't realize it, this is a separate shawl that comes off of her shoulders. Absolutely designed to go with this dress. And then we have this beautiful dress with, again, the attached shawl that wraps around. And we finally have the royal purple, like a woven, um, almost a, a common, like a Lindsay Woolsey type of material. Very, very beautiful on this one as well. And such a dear, dear size. This doll has so many things going for it. And then, I mean, here is this other an entire other group of clothing, a day dress, a, a day robe, her collar. Look at this, I love these blouses, they are so beautiful. The workmanship on them is just wonderful. She has this gray cape with a, a mauve lining to wear with those mauve dresses, a little um, blouse, a wonderful petticoat with the extended train. And she has a silk apron, a mauve skirt, another black skirt, and finally, this wonderful linen cape to go over all. And all of this is kept in this fabulous trunk. I've seen a lot of trunks in my day, but not like this, with this cobalt blue lining and that beautiful decoupage with the gilt paper edging and all these little compartments. Just a fabulous piece. This style is First class. She's pride of the show as far as I'm concerned.
I wanted to show you dolls, again, talking about different ways that you can value your dolls, because with a French poupée, bringing it up one more time, it's very, very difficult to ever determine who the actual maker of the doll was for the very complicated reasons I've said. So how do you judge quality? You judge it, of course, on the nature of the body, the extra swivels and, and that type of thing. You judge it on the quality of the portraiture. And you can judge a very, very simple thing is when you can have that very lucky occasion when you can find dolls that have the actual original shop boutique label or stamp on them that gives you a little starting point of saying, hey, I know this firm only sold really fine luxury dolls. So that kind of can help you with looking at the trousseaus and judging the quality of the doll. And I wanted to point out over here, I'm going to bring it right center front, very, very pivotal doll in doll history. I talked about, we started our programs with an um, Adelaide Hooray doll because it was such a, a signature doll in French poupée history. This is another one. This is Lily. Lily was issued by the doll shop of Madame Lavallée Perron. Her doll shop was called A la Poupée de Nuremberg, which I always find an interesting title, but nevertheless. Um, she had luxury items in her shop, and she did much writing. She was actually very instrumental in La Poupée Model Journal, and she named her wooden body doll Lily. When you have it with the original label, as this shows on the front, very, very important doll, and to find it with a wooden body. This was the story of Lily. It was all about the costumes and accessories again. Um, Madame Lavallée Perron was about selling the package, the world of the doll, the accessories, all the things that the doll could own. So it's wonderful to find this doll, and then you can spend many, many, many years. You can never own another doll. You can just own this one and build her world around her with furniture, costumes, accessories, because that's what Madame Lavallée Perron did, and that's what she wrote about in La Poupée Model. By the way, we talked before about the extra luxury details on the wooden bodies. This one has the luxury extra pivot on the upper leg. This one has the original store label, the stamp label of Madame Coutin, C-O-U-T-I-N, Coutin of Paris. She owned a very small doll shop, not much is known about it, except that we know that she did costume her own dolls and she offered luxury dolls. And so what you have here is, again, you can judge this doll by the fact that you don't see this face. I probably have never seen this face before. Very, very different face, very luxury model. Having the original maker stamp, very proud of her item that she was presenting, so she wanted her name on the body. And then having this fabulous original, not only costume, but that wig. Wow, that is just, it's breathtaking. So beautiful. And when she comes around again, I want you to look at her accessories. She has that blue velvet purse, which was a type of thing that would have been sold separately. She has a watch on a brooch. She has the turquoise earrings. Fabulous piece. I'm going to tip her head down so you can see her wig a little better from the top of her crown. So again, you want to always be watching for these original store labels on the dolls and then looking at their face, looking at their body, and going from there. Some of the shops that grew up in Paris were designed specifically for the children's um, dolls and clothing, and this is an example from a store. It has the original label on the front of it. Um, oh, um, oh, Paradise des Enfants. And they offered luxury items. When they put their name on it, you can be sure that they wanted it to show to its nth degree, so they would only offer luxury pieces. Probably a Jumeau doll, um, but again, just basing it on the model. And again, we're getting away from the cobalt blue eyes here now, as you can see, into getting these actual paler eyes with a little enameled overlook, of what we come to call paperweight as they get further developed. And then another doll that bears its original boutique label. This is from Au Magasin des Enfants uh, from Paris. And look at her. She has a stamp label on her. And look at her details. Like, look at this wonderful chatelaine that she's wearing, her earrings, her bonnet. The gown is absolutely amazing. Um, Hannah Buch just really loved to collect dolls with Biscans, and you'll find so many of the Biscan dolls in her collection. I, 
I wish I could like make a chart for you and show you all of the different hands because they're absolutely works of art in themselves, how they are sculpted. And we can turn it around and show you her costume all the way around. Just magnificent. And then finally from a la gallery Vivienne, this is a doll that was, um, has a lot of things going for it. Number one, it has the body stamp of the boutique. Number two, it has the maker signature, which we so seldom find on the poupée. So we can attribute this to the works of Louis Doliac. Now remember, what we said, Doliac didn't actually make the head. He would have commissioned the head, he would have commissioned the body, he would have got the wig from another place, and he would have presented it, um, probably sold it with just a chemise to the Gallery Vivienne, who might then have use their own workshop to make this extraordinary gown and presentation. And I, I hope you just take a second, um, even though we're not talking about eyes right now, look at those eyes. Very, very different, very large and dramatic, with very thick, dark eyeliner. And that starts to come up as we move into the Bebe period, the child doll period of the 1880s. This is where you're going to start finding this very dark, dramatic eyeliner. And when I turn her around, look at the bonnet. Look at the beading on that bonnet. It is absolutely extraordinary. Very, very rare doll. And luckily, as beautiful as she is rare. So finding gentleman dolls in the French poupée line, it, it's very difficult because, especially in their original costumes, because you need to, they just didn't do them. Most people cost them as fine ladies because that was part of the whole background, background and tradition of French poupées was that they were fashion emissaries. But every once in a while, and in the case of um, Hannah Buchtis' wonderful collection, I think there are three gentleman dolls. And this one I love because he has his wonderful, oh, this, this box itself, his treasure box that he comes in is so filled with absolutely wonderful marquetry work and silk lining. Fabulous. A pull-out drawer in the bottom. Very, very fine workmanship on this. And so he comes with his trunk and just a whole group of great accessories. Not different costumes. The only other costuming he has is this fine um, great coat that he would wear when he would go marching out on town for the evening or something. He has his black silk top hat. Very, very nice and he has gloves, and he has all of his finery, including a leather satchel that is actually, says instruments on it, and is actually a belt Bosch pendant or a dance card, which we're going to talk about in the next segment of these videos. He comes with his trunk. There is a tray with his um, decanter set with six goblets and this wonderful hand-blown decanter, and the tray which shows the children playing the jeu de qui, very, very fine early painted tray. He has a bone-handled parasol. He has a leather satchel. He has a pince-nez. He has a compass. He has a pipe in a traveling case, in a silk-lined purple traveling case. He has a mirror. He has a book of Shakespeare, The Merchant of Venice, which I think is great. He has a trunk full of other little miscellaneous accessories, another leather trunk. He has a globe to go on his desk, which is actually originally a candy container because it separates in the middle. And he has his leather papetery, which was made for the poupée market to be displayed with dolls full of little postcards and letters. And he has, which is just amazing, in this little leather case, he has his pearl-handled revolver, which is just grand. I think this man is wonderful. He has so many great rare accessories and displays beautiful, beautifully with your lady dolls for kind of a little extra punch.